how can you use AI to detect if there is movement in a security camera footage and raise an alert if there is a security concern. In this video, we're going to build a proof of concept of something like this using OpenAI and .NET. First things first, you'll need to head over to the OpenAI developer platform, create an account, and purchase some credits before you can get an OpenAI access key. We're going to be using this access key to access some of the models that OpenAI has available, and in this video I'm going to be using GPT-4.1 as the model for image recognition. Once you log in, you should be able to see something like this inside of your dashboard, and from the sidebar menu you can head over to API keys, create your API key, and then you can start calling the OpenAI API. I already have an API key, so I'm going to use that one to connect to the API from my .NET application. And then let me quickly show you how easy it is to use the OpenAI API from our .NET applications. I will need to install some NuGet packages, now, one of them I already have installed, it's called Microsoft Extensions AI, and it provides some abstractions for working with generative AI models. However, it's not the only thing that we need. I'm going to look for another NuGet package, and I will check includes pre-release, and the NuGet package I need is called Microsoft Extensions AI OpenAI. This is a package that allows me to easily connect to the OpenAI API, and after you install it, you can also find some simple coding snippets for how you can use this library. So let's go back to our program file, and we need to configure a so-called chat client. So I'm going to say builder services add chat client, and I need to provide a specific instance for the chat client that uses the OpenAI API. So I'm going to say new OpenAI chat, and then chat client, and you can see this expects a model and an API key. For the model, I'm going to use GPD 4.1, and for the API key, I'm going to say builder configuration, and I'm going to provide an environment variable that has the key OpenAI API key. However, we can't return this as a value to the add chat client method because it accepts an I chat client. So what we have to do instead is cast this to an iChat client, and luckily there's a helpful extension method that allows us to return the correct value. And then I can resolve my chat client from dependency injection by saying application services, get required service, and use the chat client. To interact with the chat client, I need to define a new message, so we'll create a new chat message instance. We're going to specify the role as the user. So we are the ones who are sending the message. The other options are assistant, system, and tool. And then after that, I can provide the content of my message. The two options are providing a string value as your prompt, or you can pass in an AI content object. Now we're going to explore this later, but for now, let's just ask the LLM, what is .NET? So then I can use my chat client to get a response from the large language model, and I need to pass in the message. We're going to get back a response, and the response itself contains the response text. So I can just print this out to the console, and we should be able to figure out if this application is working. Now, I already set my API key as an environment variable behind the scenes, so now I can just start the application. I'm going to place a breakpoint here, and we're going to step through creating a chat client, instantiating a message, sending this message to our large language model, and in a couple of moments we're going to get a response that we are going to print out to the console. Finally, if I open up the console, you can see that it contains a detailed response from our OpenAI model explaining what .NET is. So I'm not particularly interested in this. This is just meant to check if our connection to the OpenAI API is working, and once I have this in place, I can move to the actual purpose of this video. And the purpose is going to be analyzing our CC TV footage, which I'm going to play now, and this is just some AI generated video, but you can see that at some point an animal appears on the screen, and we're going to perceive this as movement on the screen, as well as a security concern that should raise an alert. Let's say we're just afraid of cats. So how could we go about implementing this? One option could be just sending the raw video to a large language model, and letting the model analyze the video and tell us what's inside. However, this doesn't really fit our use case. Remember that we want to actually process a live feed 
from a camera and this isn't a simple video that we can send to a model instead what i'm going to do is take a single frame which is effectively an image and send that to the model to figure out if there is a problem for this i'm going to install one more nougat package it's called opencv sharp and i'm going to install the one for windows because this also installs some additional libraries that we are actually wrapping with this nougat package so let's close this down and i'm going to get rid of everything except the chat client and i'm going to drop in this piece of code so what i'm doing is specifying the path to my video which is available under videos slash cctv mp4 and i'm creating a new video capture object this is coming from the opencv sharp library so it allows me to access this video file and then i can access a specific frame by creating a matte object and then here's what i'm actually going to do with these objects so what i want to do is grab the frame rate for my video capture and I effectively just want to grab one frame per second of video. We don't want to overanalyze too many images. Let's say one frame per second is more than enough for our use case. So what I'm going to do is write a while loop. It's going to try to capture a frame from this video and if we can't capture or the frame itself is empty, we're going to break from this loop. This probably means that we've processed the length of the video. Otherwise, I'm only going to capture the frame where the frame number can be divided by the frame rate. The frame rate is typically going to be something like 30 fps so then i'm going to create a new directory called frames and i'm going to save the file and i'm going to save the specific frame as a new image inside of this folder so we should end up with a couple of frames from our video that we can then process using an llm so let me just start this to demo what's going to happen i'm going to place a breakpoint here you can see the frame rate is indeed 30 and if i try to capture the frame you can see that we get some object and then we're going to create this directory initialize a new file and finally write the frame as an image using cv2 image write so i'm going to let this play out by pressing continue and our application is going to complete and if i open up the frames folder you will see that we have some images in here so we were able to successfully open a video and then capture some specific frames that we can now analyze using an LLM. To just walk you through the specific frames, here's what the transition is going to look like. You can see the cat entering the screen and then leaving it and then entering the screen again. This is just some AI generated video. But let me show you how we can actually process these images. So I'm going to demo a simple example first. Let me add a comment. So this is going to be number one the simple example and i'm just going to drop in the code because it's more of the same i'm going to look for the files in the frames directory that have a png extension and i want to initialize a new chat message where i specify a prompt explaining what i want to analyze in this image now in this simple example i'm just going to ask the model to extract the information from the image and tell me what it sees now we also have to pass it the actual image so how you can do that is by attaching something to the message content of the chat message object this is going to be a new data content instance and i'm just going to read the bytes for my image and pass the mime type as the other argument so then we can send this over to our model by calling get response async and passing in a chat message and then we can process the response and print out the text so let me go ahead and run this and you should see after a few moments the responses will start streaming in and we can print out what what GPD 4.1 thinks about each specific image. And after our program completes, we should see something like this in the console. Now, mind you that we didn't particularly constrain the response of the model, so each API call could result in a different response. And this is definitely the case in the sample here. But let me just try to highlight the important bits. You can see a summary section here saying that there's a short hair Siamese like cat walking on a paved path. So it is able to detect there is something moving inside of our image that we grab from the video feed. So we can definitely use this information, but not in an unstructured format like this. So how can we improve on this? I'm going to show you in our second example, which I'm going to call enhanced prompt, and I'm going to drop in the sample below. Now, let me walk you through what's different. Well, the main part is this section here. I'm being a bit more detailed in the prompt, telling it what are the analysis requirements. So let's say we want to detect living beings, movement detection, security assessment, 
confidence scoring on a scale of 1 to 10 considering the image quality and then what is the response format that we want to get back from the LLM. This should help constrain what we are getting back from the API and make this more usable in a real world scenario. So say we want to get back an alert status, detected objects, confidence scoring, description, recommendation and I'm also adding a special rule that we are afraid of cats and they pose a high risk for us. And then everything else is pretty much the same and I'm just printing out the results into the console. So let me comment out the first sample so that we don't wait for it to complete and then let's start the application again. So you'll see after a couple of moments the large language model is going to start responding and you can see that we are getting back a structured response. You can see the alert status usually as none. We're also getting information for which frame we are actually processing and I think starting from frame 120 or 150 we are running into a cat. So you can see from frame 150 we have detected one cat the confidence scoring is usually 9 or 10 because it's pretty clear from the image what we are getting back and we also have a description and a recommendation for what we should do next. I'm going to stop this now and one last improvement that I want to show you is how you can take this structural response and convert it into an actual object. So for this we're going to create some types that I'm going to drop in below and the main response that we're going to be getting back is a security analysis result. It's going to contain an alert level, any detected objects, the confidence score description, a security risk, and a recommendation from the model. The alert level and security risk are going to be enums with their respective values. And then we just need to use this. So for this, I'm going to create another example. This is going to be number three, and I'm going to call this the strongly typed response. And then here's how you would use it. So again, very similar. Our prompt is now more detailed in that it's telling the large language model to return a JSON object and we're giving it a sample structure of what the response should look like. Note how I'm specifying the enum values. I'm telling it that detected objects should be an array of strings. A confidence score can have a value between 1 to 10. So these are all helpful to constrain the model and tell it what kind of result you are expecting to get back. So this mostly matches the structure that we defined in the security analysis result. The second thing that changes is how we are calling the API. So we're calling get response async, but we can now specify the security analysis result as the generic argument here, and then pass in our prompt. And once we get back our type result, is going to be a chat response that contains a security analysis result. We can access this using the result property and then this should hopefully contain our strongly typed result. And then I can access the properties on this object to print out the result to the console. So let me comment out the second example and I'm going to place a breakpoint right here after I extract the result and then let's start the application. And after a few moments we get a response back and if I take a look at the result object you can see that these properties are populated. The alert level is none, the security risk is none and this makes sense because we are looking at the first image with the name of frame 000 and there really is nothing inside of this frame. So I'm going to let this play out and I'm going to place this breakpoint when we run into an alert level where the value is greater than alert level low. And you can see that we hit this breakpoint while examining the frame 120 image. Just for reference here is what this image looks like and you can notice that the model probably spots the cat entering the screen from the left side. If we take a look at the description you can see that a black cat is partially visible on the left side of the image so my assumption is correct. The alert level is high, the security risk is high because we added a special rule inside of our prompt that we are afraid of cats and they pose a high risk. So it's definitely respecting what we stated in the prompt. The confidence score is 8 and the recommendation is that immediate action is required. We need to notify security personnel about the presence of a cat in the area. So I'm going to stop the program now and I'm hoping that this illustrates how you can use Microsoft Extensions AI or MEAI to connect to your OpenAPI account and integrate with the available models. Also, if you want to grab the source code for this video, you can do so from the pinned comment that's going to be right below. And I think this is definitely an interesting proof of concept of how you could connect to a security feed using some video processing library and then processing the individual frames using a large language model. Now, the video capture object also supports connecting to an IP video stream or even directly to a capturing device so you can actually connect to a live feed from a camera 
and then process that from your application. So this can definitely be extended to something more interesting. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash the like button right below. And if you want to learn more about using MEAI, check out this video next where you can connect to a large language model that's running locally to start building simple AI-driven applications. Thanks a lot for watching this video and until next time, stay awesome.